guys, Swan Ready here, back again for another video on the channel. In this one today, then, I will be doing my Swan City retained list. So, for the 2023 2024 Championship season, I'll be discussing all the players who have played at least one game for Swan City in the first team who are at the club at the moment, and whether I would keep them, loan them, or sell them. Pretty easy concept, but I believe there will be a lot of debate in the comment section. So, let me know down below, guys, if you agree, disagree. And let me know down below. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a lot of debate. And really, we need to get a squad ready for the top six next season. Some of these players are simply not good enough for that. So Andy Fisher. Now, he wasn't the main goalkeeper in terms of the busy part of the season. Obviously, he started off as the main goalkeeper. Had a poor spell. Bender came in. And then, obviously, Bender got injured. So, Fisher retained his number one spot. I'm going to say keep just as a number two. Um, I still think we should sign another goalkeeper, maybe on loan or something, because uh, I don't think Bender's back until October, November time, so we're going to need a new goalkeeper for the first couple of months, so maybe you know a loan goalkeeper or free transfer. But I'm going to keep Andy Fisher lucky. He's on low wages. He knows Russell Martin. He can do a job at times, but I just don't think he should be the number one. Stephen Bender, keep 100%. I think he really improved massively, uh, especially when he came in as number one last season. Of course, in Martin's first season, we on not Peterborough, but the games he did play under Russell Martin in the first couple of games, Bender was not great. Couldn't really pass up from the back, but he's improved magnificently since that and looks really, really capable of doing that. And of course, with the stature of Bender compared to Fisher, you know, look at the height difference. It's a huge, huge difference. You know, you want your goalkeeper to be strong, physical, tall, and that is what Bender's got over Fisher, so 100% keep Stephen Bender. Andreas Sundergaard, sell. Um, he's out of contract there anyway, so I'm going to assume he will not be renewing. But yeah, he's not played a single game for us. Only feature in, in this video because he's been on the bench. He has been in and under the first team squad. But yeah, well, something does cover in case Andy Fisher got injured. Fisher never got injured, so Sundergaard, no real reason to keep him here. Lewis Webb, I'm going to go for loan. Now, I know you need a third choice goalkeeper, but I, I already said that I think we should sign a free agent or a loan. So that gives the option for Lewis Webb to go on loan. Of course, he went out on loan last season to Avra Wiswith, but obviously um, that call got recalled very shortly because of the injury sustained to Stephen Bender. So then Webb was our number two until Andreas Sundergaard came in. But yeah, he's got a bright future. Still young, got him on long-term contract, so I think uh, another loan would be good for him. On to defenders now. Ryan Manning, 159% keep. Um, I've gone above the 100% there, but yeah, Ryan Manning has to stay at the club. I know he's out of contract. We really have to give him a new deal. I know he's approaching his 30s very soon, but at this level, you, you find find it very hard to find very consistent players because championship is a league where you you get players who perform one week but don't perform the next week that's why that championship level but Manning nine out of ten times he performs every single week he's fantastic brilliant left back brilliant left wing back gets up the attacking flank a lot creates goals can take free kicks can score from long range he's exactly what he won in the left back and can defend as well would be a huge loss if he does leave the club I think um if another championship club does snap him up, snap him up like West Bromwich Albion, Norwich, a team a bit better than us in terms of financial uh, exploitation for him in terms of wages and his agent, then I totally understand it. But for me, if we really want to get top six next season, push on to be a really good side, then you know one of the main things we have to do is keep Ryan Manning. Benka Bango, keep. I didn't think he had a great season last season. wasn't a bad season, don't get me wrong. But I, I just thought he you know, had a little bit of an average season. Some really good games and there, some really poor games as well. So I think with Cabango now, he just needs to have a sustainable partner. In defence of him last season, there was a lot of you know chops, top, chops and changes between Harry Darling, Nathan Wood, Joel at a border at times. So I didn't think that helped Benka Bango because he's still a young centre-back. And you know he needs a partner next to him. That's where the elite centre-back come out because you have consistent and partnerships. Of course, towards the end of the season, it was near for Wodaka Bango, and we've seen how well that partnership did do. So hopefully that partnership can continue if we keep Ben Cabango. Harry Darling, I'm going to go for keep as well. Obviously, signing for a, a big fee last summer in terms of for what we can achieve in terms of financial uh, signings. Didn't really have a great season, I've got to be honest. I thought he was quite poor at times. Defensively, he looked a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish. Obviously, he's played right back towards the end of the season as well, where he looked a lot more comfortable, really, defensively. Um, could score a lot of goals, to be fair, scored. I think it was probably the second most goals from a defender for us last year after Ryan Manning. Definitely the more centre-backs were more 
most goals for us last season. But yeah, I think it's a big season for Darling because if he doesn't perform this season, then you know there will be question marks whether he can continue at championship level. But for this season, I'll say keep. I think he's going to be more of a backup player though. Nathaniel Ogbeta, interesting one. I'm going to go for sell. Uh, if anyone wondering what has happened to Van Gogh, he was actually on loan Peter United, where they obviously absolutely crumbled the playoffs and will no longer uh, try to get promotion. So Ogbe will return to the club very shortly. Has only played a handful of games since he signed um, for, for for the club from Shrewsbury Town. So it's an interesting one. I don't think Russell Martin really fancies him, but if R Ryan Manning does leave. Then you know Ogbera could be replaced when he's done terrifically for Peterborough United. Their fans can't sing his praises enough. But for me, I don't think Martin fancies him. League One to Championship level is a big gap, as we've seen with Harry Darling last season and Scott Twine this season for Burnley. So yeah, I'm gonna go for sell. Brandon Cooper. I'm gonna go sell, unfortunately. I really like Brandon Cooper. He's such a nice guy, you know, local boy and that. But for me, I just don't think he's gonna get any game time here next season. Like we've already got Ben Cabango, who I've said we're gonna keep Harry Darling, we're gonna keep. Uh, we'll talk about Nathan Wood in a moment, and I, and I think we're gonna sign a centre back in. We've had a centre record last season. Obviously, he was on loan at Forest Green uh, from January onwards last season, and you know, in terms of a loan spell for his for himself, it did pretty well in terms of getting game time and you know playing against some very good players at a very good level. But in terms of you know the overall loan didn't go too well. Obviously, Forest Green got relegated with a few games to go. Finished rock bottom, lost to the arch rivals Cheltenham. So yeah, wasn't a great loan for Brandon Cooper. You know, he's a you know twenty two twenty free now and to be fair we we all said that about Cullen you know when Cullen went on loan to Lincoln we said you know he's gonna go he's not very good enough good enough one goal for Lincoln comes back and it was a big part of the team so it's obviously an opportunity for Brandon Cooper but for me I think it's better for himself and his career if he goes elsewhere. Joel Latabordia I'm gonna go for sell slash release um with Latabordia Look, I don't know what his position is, I've got to be honest. He plays everywhere around the back. Plays left back, centre half, right back, wing back. Now, he's very versatile. I understand he needs versatile players at championship level. But for me, Latabordia, yeah, he's just too inconsistent for me. Um, you know, in terms of him not signing a new deal, probably means he wants a better wage, which I don't know if he warrants, to be fair. I'd rather spend that money on getting a recognised right back like... Um, key from Exeter who's a free transfer you know if we're going to keep Latabordia yeah, then it's going to be a backup I don't think he'll be a starter for us next season but if we aren't going to keep him then the money where his wages were going to go we can just get an out and out right back or an out and out centre back for the same price for me release he's been a good servant at the club but I just think um, the time is on the wall for him to go Kyle Norton, I'm going to go for sell slash release. Again, Norton didn't really play much towards the end of last season. Obviously, he was a first teamer until about October, November, where he was making quite a lot of mistakes and obviously got cut out of the team for Nathan Wood and Harry Darling. So, yeah, Norton being a great servant, like I said, at the club, obviously joining in 2015, I like to believe, 2015, 2016, obviously from Tottenham, and he's been brilliant. You know, in the Premier League last couple of years, you know, he wasn't great, but as soon as we went down to the Championship, he was one of our best players and yeah, I can't sing Carl Norton's praise enough. Brilliant professionalism, fantastic player, fantastic attitude. Very, very rarely do you see Carl Norton make a misplaced tackle. He was a brilliant defender, but unfortunately, I think his time's up. Matty Cernola, now he's not uh, part of the club, but in terms of what I want him back, no. Um, yeah, it was pretty poor last season, I've got to be honest. As a wing back, and someone with a bit of pace didn't utilise that enough for my liking. Scored two goals against West Brom and Blackpool. Um, the West Brom one couldn't really miss, to be fair. And the Blackpool one was a uh, good finish, to be fair to him. But yeah, Sornola is just a loan which has not worked out. But I do wish him well for the rest of his career. Lincoln McFadden. I'm featuring him as he has been on the bench this season. And also has played in Russell Martin uh, against Wren in the Carroll Cup previously. Um, for Lincoln, I'm going to go for a loan. Um, under 23 has done really well, to be fair to them, this season. Or the under 21s, you know, call them. The under 21s have done really well, to be fair to them, this season. Obviously, their last game beating Birmingham under 21. 10-1 which is a terrific result but yeah I think with these under 21 players there is an opportunity for McFadden again to the first team with our lack of left backs and obviously Manning potentially leaving the club as well but for me I'd go for loan. T 
Tivon Drosertia, again, right back is a position we're not really glorified in in the first team. Same with left back, we haven't got a lot of options. So these young lads have got a potential to come in and make a real impact in pre-season. But for me, Drosertia, still very young to be fair, has had a lot of injuries though. Uh, a lot of cruciate ligament injuries. But I'm going to go for a loan as well. I think a very good loan for him would be someone like Newport where Oli Cooper really thrilled and you know succeeded so yeah i'd like to see Mc, uh, mcphee and amrasia both got on loan midfielders now jay fulton 100 percent keep just signing a new deal which i'm absolutely thrilled about he's my favorite player and yeah he's gonna gonna be coming up to 10 years since he's been at the swans he's been a fantastic player for the swans of course when martin first joined he wasn't really getting utilized obviously flynn downs is in the team and <clears throat> flynn downs is an amazing footballer as we've seen with West Ham this season. But for Fault Dunn, yeah, he's had a really good impact season. Uh, the, the players who vote for their player of the season actually vote Jay Fulton as their player of the season, which just shows how much Jay Fulton's valued around the club. Joe Allen, I'm going to keep him. If Joe Allen wasn't Welsh, I might have said a different option here. But, you know, you've got to remember, he came in came into the club last season with an injury and obviously didn't have pre-season with us. So, obviously, it's going to be a bit of an upsy to the season. But... As we've seen towards the end of last season, he really put in some good performances. Individually, we want some really good performances with Joe Allen in the season, but his main problem was fitness. Now, if we can get a full pre-season under Joe Allen, obviously he's not going to be playing Wales games anymore as he retired from international football, then I really think Joe Allen can have a successful season at this level. It's just about whether he can sustain his fitness. Matt Grimes, the captain, 100% keep. Now, I'm not a big fan of Grimes at times. I think at times he does some things which are frustrating when we know he's a top-level midfielder at this level. We've seen his capability of shooting from range, but yet doesn't do it enough for me. But yeah, Grimes, brilliant. Obviously, when he's not playing, you do see that um, gap in the midfield, which Grimes does utilise. We do see that absence when Grimes isn't there. But yeah, for me, brilliant player. One of our players of the season and definitely player... One of the best players in the championship at this level for me. Olivier Encham. Now, if I was doing this around November, December time last season, then my answer would have been a lot different to what I'm going to give now. It's going to be keep towards the end of last season, March onwards, like a lot of players has been absolutely phenomenal in this new, like, narrow role. He's been brilliant. The problem with Encham is he's so inconsistent at times. It's frustrating. We know he's got the capability of being a fantastic ball player midfielder. We know he can strike the ball. We know he can dribble. But at times, it's... Times where Encham just is just fan, doesn't fancy it, which is so frustrating because he's an exceptional player on his day. But yeah, towards the end of last season, was showing consistency, which is exactly what we needed from Encham. Now, hopefully, he can have a full pre season now uh, with the Swans, obviously, after coming back from holiday and really kick on. Because if Encham can kick on, then I'm sure we'll be in the top six. Luke Cundall, I'm going to go for Let's Get Him Again. Um, unlike. Soren all, I think he's made a big impact on the team. Very, very good little player in the middle of the park. You know, his, the way he moves with the ball is simply brilliant. And, you know, toward the end of last season, really showed himself. Obviously, one of our best loans we've had in a couple of years, really, in terms of game time. And, yeah, I think Wolves would be happy to let him have us back. And I think we'd be happy to have Luke Cundall back. So, I think this works out every every part he suited, really. Liam Walsh, I'm going to go for keep as well. Same with Encham, really. Towards the end of last season, really kicked on. Of course, has been hampered with injuries since his time at the club. But, you know, those games against Bristol City and Cardiff, you know, really, really good performances from a midfielder who has had so many injuries. Didn't look like he had a single win in his career with some of the tackles he was putting in. But, yeah, with Walsh, obviously, missed the last couple of games last season just due to the Swans not want to risk him because there's no point. There's no games on the line in terms of trying to get top six or going down. So there's no point rushing him back. So, yeah, full preseason for Liam Walsh. And fingers crossed he can have a full season not get injured because just like um, some players I was saying previously he could be a big player for us. Ollie Cooper of course keep brilliant brilliant player didn't see him too much towards the end of last season I've got to be honest was kind of second fiddle behind Patterson and Encham but I really do believe that Cooper will have a good season I know last season until about October time then started coming into the side but yeah scoring the South Wales derby big game player very, very good player on his day as well gotta keep him Ben Lloyd I'm gonna say keep I, I think he's a bit too young to go out on loan to be honest how old is he 17, 18 I think he'll be better suited playing on 21's football for another season potentially coming in now and again in the Carabao Cup of the FA Cup but yeah Ben Lloyd like the luck of what I see from him to be fair or well, everyone who watches him 21 to rave about him so yeah hopefully you know his contracts at the club's you know, sensible and, you know, don't lose him to one of the big clubs. Dan Williams, I'm going to go for sell. Now, Dan Williams, 
Um, his loan spells haven't been great from what I've been hearing from fans of those clubs. Um, obviously local boy, but I just feel like he's at the age now when he's got to be playing regular football, whether that's you know League One, League Two, National League. I just don't think he's going to get it for us next season. Cameron Congreve. I can go for loan. I really like Cameron Congreve. I thought he was very harsh, Russell Martin, the way he treated Congreve at times last season, especially Middlesbrough, subbing him off after 30 minutes away from home. I thought that was a bit of poor management, really, especially for a youngster. But to be fair to Cameron, you know, he went back into under 21, didn't lose his head, kept his professionalism on, um, and obviously got back to the first team later on in the season. But yeah, I think a loan, especially to like someone local like Newport County or maybe Forest Green, Cheltenham would be exceptional for him because I really feel like a loan in the lower leagues just to, to, to to get used to physicality of men's football will do him the world of good. I really like the look of Cameron Congo. I think he's going to be a very good player for us in the future. Azim Abdullah, I'm going to go for keep. I keep him for the under 21s again. Same with Ben Lloyd. I think he'd be better off suited to under 21s football and now coming in now and again. I've seen last season, you know, he came in against Oxford United. Obviously, not a great result in the end for us, losing on penalties, but very good experience. Obviously, I think he. Obviously, goes for his Scotland youth call-up as well, which is brilliant for him and brilliant for the club as well. Just gives us more exploitation in terms of what we're doing with these young players, so keep him. Joel Cottrell, again, I'm going to keep him a bit young to go out on loan for me. Same with Ben Lloyd, where he's at that age, where you could go on loan or you could stay for another season to the end 21 and coming in now and again for the cup or the first team. Because I feel like some of these young players, especially if they're local lads, they would be better off staying because they know the environment, they know the people, their families here, and it's just a bit more better for them. And then they can come in later on in the end of the season where we've got nothing to play for. So, yeah, keep Joel Cottrell. On the forwards now, Jimmy Parson, I'm going to sell slash release him. Now, we've had some good times with Pato, we've had some bad times with Pato. He's definitely, you know, a championship player. He's not Premier League, he's definitely not League One, that level of quality. Um, but yeah, Parson, I think his time's up now, to be fair. It's just not really worked out in terms of ever since, you know, we had that contract debacle. It's It's been a bit of a sour relationship. I will thank him, though, for what he's done in Swansea in terms of, you know, the Cardiff games and his first season pass and pros link up was absolutely phenomenal, wasn't it? One of the best duels, I think, we saw that season. But it's not really worked out ever since that season for Pat or I think it's just been better for all parties if he just, you know, goes elsewhere. Kyle Joseph. I'm going to go keep. I really like the look of Kyle Joseph. Had a very good season at Oxford United. Obviously, you know, being their main striker all season, that's where he wants to play and that's where, you know, we could play him. Especially if we're playing Cullen up there, you know, I think Kyle Joseph is arguably a better player than Cullen from what we've seen at League One level, but Championship's a different level. But yeah, Joseph, really good season for Oxford United, and I'd like to see him come back. Obviously, hasn't really been given an opportunity ever since we signed him, which, you know, is fair enough. But hopefully, you know, this season coming up now is a big season for Carl Joseph. Pro, I'm going to sell him. Not a chance. Keep him, definitely. I know he's only got one year left in his deal, so we could do what Blackburn did and, you know, just let him run out his contract and lose him on a free. I know championship clubs, especially Swansea, need money and, you know, we're a team which sells players for more than what we bought them for. But for me, I love Perot. It's very hard to find a 20-goal season striker in the championship. Very hard. You know, we've been blessed over the years. We had McBurney, Jason Scotland. And now we've got obviously Joel Pro. I don't want to lose Pro because if we lose him, we're going to have to buy someone else. And there's no guarantee that they'll be able to do what Joel Perot's done. It's very hard. If we do sell him, we're probably going to be looking towards, towards 10 million, which I think is a fair price. Obviously, would like a bit more, but with one year left in this deal and teams outside of England can, you know, pre arrange a contract agreement in January for him, it's a tricky one. I'll keep him though, but I'm not sure if the board will agree. Morgan Whitaker. I'm going to sell him, unfortunately. I really like Morgan Whitaker, but for me, I'm thinking what Russell Mine wants to do is a bit of money in the bank if he can get rid of Morgan Whitaker. I think he'll go back to Plymouth. I've got to be honest, I think Plymouth will buy him for about 1.52 million. I know he rejected similar for Rangers, but his form in the second half of the season has just not been there because he's hardly played, uh, to be fair to him. But when he does play, I just like the look of him. He just gets you off the edge of the seat and you think he can do stuff. But, yeah, it's just not going to work out, I don't think, under Russell Mine. It's a big shame because he did brilliantly in League One under Plymouth Argyle. And I just feel like, you know, if we just give him a bit of consistent game time and play the way that Whittaker wants to play, then he'd be outstanding. But it's just not to be. Liam Cullen, keep. Um, yeah, I think he's a very good off-the-bench option, starting option at times for against the defensive teams. He's a fox in the box, can score. 
Um, a lot of tapping, but you've got to be in the position. And I like, really like Cullen's positioning. You know, him and Pro have a really good link up. Pro said he plays a lot better when Cullen's in the side because it just gives Pro that little bit of less pressure because there's two strikers up there, which means, you know, Pro's not going to be double marked all the time. So, yeah, Cullen, really good season last season. He's got a lot of goals. Uh, which was unexpected, really. Wasn't really expecting to still be here uh, after a season with Lincoln. Obviously, got a goal in South Wales Derby as well, which is fantastic. So, yeah, I'd keep him. Liam Smith. And obviously, signed from Manchester City in January. He's been absolutely phenomenal for the under 21s. He's been absolutely flying. He's been really big impact on why the under 21s have been so brilliantly, so have been so brilliant in the last couple of seasons uh, or the last season of what we just had in the last couple of months. He's been phenomenal. Wouldn't be surprised to see him in the first team in the near future. I'm going to keep him 100% because I don't want him to go out on loan. But, yeah, he's been really good. One to keep an eye out. So on the fans. So the last one for this video then, Josh Thomas. I'm going to loan him. Interesting one. I believe he's 20 or 21 now. Obviously, he had a lot of injuries. Like, some of the under 21, some of the injuries they've had are very, very cruel for young players. But I feel like if he can go out on loan and score 5-10 to 10 goals at League 1, League 2 level, then come back to the development squad. I think they'll be very good. Um, I don't think he'll get in the first team next season. He's scoring a lot of goals. I think he scored four against Birmingham in the uh, last game. So, yeah, he's capable of scoring goals. And what we need to do, what we didn't do to Liam Cullen when he was doing this at Youth Academy is loan him. When Cullen was doing this, we should have loaned him when the opportunity we didn't. And it's kind of, you know, progressed, uh, decreased Cullen's career a little bit. But in terms of Josh Thompson, we've got to learn about this season. Otherwise, you know, he might not have a future here. Thanks guys for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on my Swans keep, sell or loan list. Let me know if you do agree or disagree with anyone in the comments. Really going to be making videos again. I know the likes aren't great, but, you know, I think it just makes a better impact. So you will have to bear with, like I said. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Will be very interested to see what happens with Swans' head coach Russell Mine. There'll be a lot of videos out in the future. As soon as better break a new sandwich with the Swans, you will see it on this channel first. The best Swans that you can create out there. Like, subscribe, comment and yeah i'll see you in the next one gonna be an interesting summer as always with this club